16. 66 points higher now on the Nifty. The Nifty has continued its momentum. It's up around 7 tenths of percent. And this really is a market all about momentum. This is a market in which you're seeing big gains. We are all set for 18,000. Uh, let's see if we can do it in the uh, last one hour or we have to wait for tomorrow's gap up. It's been a good trading session. The Nifty goes home with a gain of close around 100 points. The mid-cap index keeping in step was up close to around uh, a percent odd. In fact, that was a big outperformance. The number of stocks advancing made way more than the number of stocks that were declining. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track around six hours of the day's trading action in just five headlines. I'm Michael D'Souza. Here are the top headlines for the day. The stock market chalk up robust gains as global markets look beyond the short-term pain. The Nifty moves closer to around the 18,000 mark. The Sensex holds above the 60,000 mark. The Nifty Bank gains over a half a percent. Mid-caps end higher with a gain of almost a percent. Shares of PBR and Iron Australian trade after a sharp fall on Friday. Brahmastra mops up more than 210 crore rupees worldwide in its first weekend. IDC buses and trade after chairman Sanjeev Puri is upbeat on the economy and demand, even as he says inflation remains a key risk going forward. Puri sees green shoots in the rural demand, says budget tightening helped protect margins and promises more steps to keep cost in check. That's an exclusive. Now, Zara tech surges close to 5%. Google announces a one-year limited uh, uh, time pilot program to allow fantasy sports and rummy applications by Indian developers to be distributed through Google Play. Aura Pharma and Ajanta Pharma, they feel the heat from U.S. drug regulator. Sambardhan Madhusan gains over a percent after Daimler India acquisition. Tata Consumer also gains after reports hint as at a possible acquisition of Bisleri. Well, here's the lineup that we have in store for you. In market opinion, we have Gautam Shah of Goldilocks Premium Research and Rupal Agarwal of Bernstein. And in the top corporate voices that we have for you on the show, IDC Chairman and Managing Director, Mrs. Sanjeev Puri. Well, let's begin with the day's action first up. Stock markets gained for a third straight session with major indices ending at the highest level that we've seen in the last one month or so. The Sensex gained over 300 points to reclaim the 6,000 mark. The Nifty gained over 100 points with the banks as, uh, and the mid-caps peaking up. We did have uh, you know, a good trading session. Prashant Nair is standing by to run us through the market wrap. Prashant? Almost at 18,000 on the Nifty today with the rally that we saw. And uh, I mean, uh, what can one say? The move has been relentless for the last many weeks and it just continued as we kicked off another week once again. Uh, towards the end, there was a little bit of come off which we saw, but uh, you know, that's par for the course given the strong gains that we've seen. What did well? Real estate as an index was the top gainer. Media uh, stocks did well. The entire small cap and mid cap part of the market, small caps especially, and of course IT services, which have uh, lagged quite a bit, still uh, quite a bit uh, off from their highs, uh, came up a little bit. In terms of specific names there, Tech Mahindra and Infosys stood out as far as large cap IT is concerned. There were names like Adani Ports, Titan, uh, Axis Bank from the financials did well, Divi's Laboratories, Aisha, UPL, Tara Steel and Coal India. I mean, actually, a bunch of these old economy names uh, did quite well as well. I mean, the point is, the market's been doing well in India, irrespective of what the global market scene has looked like. And uh, th what is interesting is that last week, the US is starting to fire as well. It's starting to see a bounce. It was down for three prior weeks, and last week it ended up about 4% or so. What could be the situation if global markets also see a bit of a bounce? Uh, and what could that lead to here in India? Those are questions. In the very near term, of course, 18,000 is something which we will watch. And of course, tomorrow, out of the US on Tuesday, that is, we'll get the consumer price inflation numbers, which for the very near term will set the course. Thanks for that, Prashant. Well, in market opinion, Gautam Shah, founder and chief strategist at Goldilocks Premium Research, believes that the market looks firm and this is textbook style of a bull market at play. He expects a close above that 18,000 odd mark for the Nifty. That's what could set up the next leg of the up move. 
even at these levels, there are no real overbought signs. You know, there are no topping out signs. The market looks firm. There is phenomenal relative strength. Participation is great. Momentum on the good days is far better than the bad days. So just about everything suggests that this is a textbook style bull market that will continue. However, I think as I mentioned last time as well, the index is absolutely irrelevant because the kind of strength that you're seeing in the broader markets on a daily basis while the Nifty went through this three-week consolidation just tells you that it is still a very bottom-up kind of a market. I think this IT decline is a little overdone uh, without any real materialistic change in fundamentals. Uh, we've almost seen a sort of a double bottom. I think this 28,500 area on the IT index was extremely critical. And I'm encouraged with the way the rebound has taken place in the last two days. So I think a reversal can happen. So, but if you have to play this story from a six to 12 month perspective, it makes sense to buy here because the downside is limited and the upside potential is about 15 to 20%. Well, in more market opinion, we have Rupal Agarwal, Senior Research Analyst, Asia Quantitative Strategy at Bernstein, who sees macro risk to continue. She remains a little bit cautious on the market. We still remain a little bit more cautious. Uh, I think the macro risk still persists. And uh, uh, I sort of agree, you know, the, the Indian market have been uh, relatively much more resilient, uh, you know, and, and there have been some external factors to it along with, of course, you know, the domestic story being uh, being strong. Uh, but I think that the China, uh, you know, not doing well and a lot of investors not being comfortable, you know, adding more China exposure has, uh, in some sense, helped this reversal that we've seen in FIS coming back. Um, so I think there have been some external factors. From here on, uh, we are still, you know, remaining more cautious, I would say. Uh, you know, there are, of course, signs of, um, some breather coming to the market in the form of if, you know, inflation starts coming down significantly. You know, domestically, I agree, uh, Indian data is looking much better. And, you know, that's been one of the reasons we've started seeing FIS coming back. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of that has also to do with the fact that other economies are looking much worse. Um, so we could continue to see some, uh, you know, flow back into India. But again, a lot of that will have to depend on how dollar moves, how yields move in U.S. Because, you know, if it's a larger capital outflow from EM kind of a trade, then India will, uh, you know, will also face the brunt of it. Well, moving to the second headline now, Inox Leisure Search close to 4%. Even PVR is up close to around 3.5% on the weekend release of Brahmastra. Despite mixed reviews, well, the film saw stronger than expected footfalls, surprising the box office. Remember, on Friday, the stocks ended lower. Today, they saw a big fight back. Bahista joins in with all the key factors that help collections. Bahista? Well, Brahmastra has definitely brought about a sigh of relief to the film exhibition industry as a whole. And this is because since many months, uh, the industry was suffering due to poor content and hence lower footfalls for the industry. Now, Brahmastra's total box office collections in the domestic market have crossed 100 crores already. And worldwide gross collections are in excess of 200 crores. And this is only in the initial three days of the movie release. The movie has actually received some mixed responses. It has also received some uh, negative reviews. But the footfalls over the first weekend of the movie release have been much stronger and higher than was anticipated. There have also been some special shows which have been arranged at odd timings like 2.30 a.m., 6 a.m. by PVR, which is supposedly due to the higher demand. Now, what has really helped in this movie in clocking the kind of collections that they have? One has definitely been the elevated high ticket prices. The second is the strong marketing team that they have uh, involved in. Next is the differentiated content with VFX and there has been a very strong star cast. Now in terms of some movie lineups that we have for September, we primarily only have The Woman King and Vikram Veda. But Vikram Veda is expected to be released on the 30th of September which is towards the end of the month and hence the collections will flow in Q3 which is in October. So in September probably the industry is banking only on Brahmastra for now. Okay, Vaisla, but don't go on that. Uh, you're also tracking some brokerage reports on CAMS as well as HAL. Speaking about CAMS first, well, the stock surged close to around 4.5% after Motilal Oswal, well, they initiated a buy outlook. Vaisla, tell us more about Motilal's view on CAMS first. 
you're right. Motilal has initiated a coverage on CAMS and uh, they've given a buy rating for the stock with a target price of 3,000 rupees. They've said that CAMS has a 70% market share versus 64% which was in FI15 and is a leader in India's mutual fund registrar and transfer agent industry. Now with the mutual fund penetration which is quite low in India at approximately 16% as against the global average which is much higher at 63%, uh, Motilal expects a strong 15% Kager in the assets under management for the industry in the coming decade. Also, the account aggregator business has the potential to revolutionize uh, lending and financial planning, which is the way UPI did for payments. Uh, you can expect the mutual fund business to register FI22 to FI25 Kager for revenue of approximately 13%, but 15% Kager uh, in the PAT, while the operating margins could remain flat. And the ROEs are expected to touch 45% by FI25. The dividend payout is also healthy at approximately 65%. Paisa, now coming to HAL, a report initiated by uh, Antique. Uh, tell us about that buy outlook they have uh, on the stock. Well, the stock is flying away in trade today. Paisa? Hindustan Aeronautics has actually had a very sharp run-up in its stock price. It has been a strong beneficiary of the defence indigenization theme which is at play in India. So uh, today itself the stock is up nearly 7%. In the past one month it was up 14%, six months it was up 90% and year to date it has been up, it has more than doubled for that matter. So in terms of valuations at 21 times it's FI23, 19 times FI24. Let's look at what has been the shareholding pattern for the company. It's a very tightly held shareholding pattern that they have. Government owns a little over 75% at 75.15% while mutual funds hold 7.5% 7, 7 and FIIs hold uh, another 5.5% which cumulatively already accounts for 96%. Now let's look at what the brokerages have to say. Morgan Stanley had uh, a cover, uh, released a report on the stock a few days back and they had a target price of 2,655 rupees, while antique stock broking has an, a higher target price of 3,140 and they've initiated the coverage on the stock today, wherein they say that uh, this company has been a strong play on India's defense aerospace capex. The company has a robust revenue visibility for the future. It has a strong order book in excess of 84,000 crores. Also, it has a strong pipeline to ensure the long-term growth. The experts, exports are also emerging as the newer uh, growth driver for the company. In From FI15 to FI22, there was a CAGR of 31% and today the exports are at 130 uh, billion rupees. So, uh, definitely a good thing for, for all the defence stocks, not just for uh, Hindustan Aeronautics. Indeed, uh, Vaista, thanks a lot for joining in and filling us in with a whole host of stocks there. Well, the third, third headline now, ITC was buzzing in trade today after ITC Chairman and Managing Director Sanji Puri said that the economy has normalised and demand recovery is robust. Speaking exclusively to CNBC TV18 and Shireen Barn, Puri also warned that inflation remains a key risk, even as he said, there are green shoots across rural India. He also credited the company's efforts, tightening its belt to protect margins and promised more such steps to keep cost in check. Let's hear him out. I think the good, good sign that we have today is that the economy has really normalized. The recovery has been robust and uh, the economy is progressive and that stable environment uh, does well for businesses. So we are continuing to experience strong growth across uh, our business uh, segments. Yes, inflation is a concern, but that's more limited to the consumer side, where we are continuing to see uh, growth. You know, uh, let's talk about consumer sentiment in a little more detail, Sanjeev. As you pointed out, uh, inflation is biting. What we hear in terms of commentary from other CEOs leading FMCG companies is that the urban pockets continue to uh, be stronger in comparison to the rural pockets. There has been a fair degree of down trading in the market as well. What is the visible indications that you're getting both on urban versus rural demand? Are you starting to see a pickup in rural? Uh, and what does that mean in terms of your ability to be able to pass on on any future price hikes at this point in time. You said that will be the last resort. Uh, uh, you know, is that something that you're considering today? So, so it's like this that, uh, uh, you know, both the trends are visible in the market. There is a strong trend of premiumization. We are also seeing people, uh, you know, titrate and, and go down to uh, lower price uh, uh, packs or really down trade. So both of the trends are visible. 
we are experiencing overall a strong growth and what we are also seeing is some green shoots of pickup even in rural mm -hmm. uh, i do believe that given the uh, that the inflation inflation is kind of uh, now cooling off i just wanted to get mm -hmm. a clarification mm -hmm. from you on what's happened on the export front because mm -hmm. of the restrictions what was the revenue contribution on the export side and what is it today and secondly you also spoke about commissioning new plants uh, what is the capex likely to be these are of course already you know plants mm -hmm. that are going to be commissioned but in terms of new capacity being added on what is the capex outlook okay so as far as the uh, revenue is concerned i think the la large surge in our revenues that you saw in the recent past has been driven by some of these opportunities no, no doubt about it right but what we that, that these are really trading opportunities mm. right and trading opportunities also are not uh, you know these are small margin opportunities right what i'm really trying to say is as far as exports are concerned the this kind of opportunity exports are concerned they come with very wafer thin they come with wafer thin margin they, okay. it's not something that is going to materially you sure. know change the uh, mm. yeah they they will be blip in the top line okay but you know it it does not give you commensurate bottom line okay so 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 just we have to keep that in keep that in perspective okay. right uh, hopefully the right sense will prevail over a time which is you more know, logical <laughs> Let me then ask you at this point in time you talked about belt tightening and you said that uh, you haven't tightened the belt as much as you have uh, 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 over the past year or so uh, how much of more are we likely to see uh, in terms of that uh, and you know how worried are you about margins today what would you qualify as the big risk uh, both to the demand outlook as well as the margins today I think we we believe we still can continue to improve margins through a lot of interventions that we are doing it's uh, you know for example through digital the way we buy today yeah. industry 4.0 in the factories mm. in the supply chain mm. you know all facets uh, all facets are are being optimized through digital technologies and and we are seeing benefits of that mm. our distributed manufacturing of icms we have 10 of them now and two of them already have integrated automated warehouses which which gives another productivity in logistics right so all of this with reduced distance to market with the delaying of operations and the mm. optimization efforts that we are taking continuing to you know uh, boost uh, usage of renewable energy so all that is with that we do believe uh, that uh, the the 1% or 100 basis points that we are talking about consistently improving margins year on year i think we will be able to deliver it interesting conversation then from the big boss of itc well time for a quick break but stay with us we'll be back in a jiffy with the remaining headlines Welcome back to Still with us on Markets Today. Well, let's run you through the remaining headlines that we are tracking for you. The fourth headline trade, Nazara Technology surged close to 5% after Google announced a one-year limited uh, time pilot program to allow fantasy sports and rummy apps by uh, developers in India to be distributed via Google Play. Uh, we have the joint uh, MD of the company, that's at Nazara Tech. He told us here at CNBC TV team that the Google experimenting with fantasy games is a positive step for all players in this space and that more clarity on the regulatory as well as gst front will be pretty helpful as you're marked no there has been a lot of regulatory unclarity as well as a lot of unclarity on how uh, these businesses have to be taxed and i think uh, the more the clarity emerges uh, the more it is uh, beneficial to companies like ourselves you know that want to follow the law of the land uh to the last letter because today what tends to happen is there's a lot of un unlevel playing field uh, you have a lot of unscrupulous players from outside the country taking advantage of this gray area where companies like us cannot aggressively invest uh because of lack of clarity so i think any step that uh, moves towards clarity is beneficial and i think uh, google experimenting uh, with fantasy games and rummy games uh, on google play is a positive step in that direction Google cannot uh, lend uh, clarity to the regulatory, but I think a lot of activity is happening at the government side, which uh, makes us very hopeful that more clarity will, uh, you know, come across. Even if you see the GST, right? The GST council has been looking at taxation on online gaming very actively, and we are also very hopeful in next, uh, you know, 
month or two months, uh, more clarity will emerge on the GST side as well. The skill-based RMG space uh, does 6% of our revenue in Q1 of FY23. And, uh, you know, we are, we acquired OpenPlay last year, uh, which was in that space. And the team is actively building, uh, working to build this business out for us. I, I think... Uh, I think the Google Play will definitely, uh, you know, boost us because uh, one, your cost of acquisition becomes lower. There's less friction for people to download from Google Play versus, you know, outside uh, that environment. And secondly, um, I think uh, organic discovery increases a lot on Google Play. Well, the fifth headline today, then pharma stocks, they saw some robust buying activity. The Nifty Pharma Index, well, it gained close to around half a percent or thereabouts. Auto Pharma managed to end higher despite receiving three observations from the U.S. drug regulator. But the U.S. FDA's observations on a Janta Pharma's plant put some pressure on the counter. CNBC TV 18's Ekta Batra joins us with more details. Well, Ekta, what are the U.S. FDA's finding regarding both these two plants that were inspected? Thanks for that. Well, I'll start with Aurobindo Pharma, which is in focus because we did access the Form 43, which was issued to their Unit 11. I'll just give you a quick background on it. It is an antibiotic, on antibiotic API facility. It was inspected uh, earlier in 2018-2019. It was issued an official action indicated status in 2019, which then turned into a warning letter in 2019. So it has had warning letter on it. It was reinspected recently from July 25th to around the 2nd of August and at that point in time it was issued around three observations. We have accessed those three observations and largely the street is possibly of the view that maybe the street, uh, maybe this particular plant would see the light uh, at the end of the tunnel or these observations would then successfully be resolved for Aurobindo. But remember that it entirely depends on the communication the company has with the USFT and the kind of remediation they undertake. But it it seems like there is no, uh, uh, you know, data integrity kind of observations or stricter observations than what was expected. Uh, separately, Ajanta Pharma is in focus because uh, the USFT inspected their the H facility last week and issued them two observations on that particular plant, which manufactures formulations. Remember that exports is around 30% of their business, and within that, the US is around 30% of their sales in within the export market. It was up six and a half percent in the previous quarter. They have guided for around four to five percent growth for the entire fiscal, a bit subdued in terms of guidance. Thanks, Ekta, for joining and giving us a quick update on the pharma space. Uh, some of the models in gain closer on a percent. The company acquired assets of frame manufacturing and assembly operations of Daimler India commercial vehicles. We had the management, Mr. Vivek Chand, the, Segal, the chairman. He says that they saw 300 crore rupee revenue from the new acquisition. Separately, he also added that they're not worried about debt due to this new acquisition. We acquired um, uh, gold sampling and uh, uh, a company which was uh, supporting uh, Daimler in India. And this is the next step. We are uh, taking over the uh, frame manufacturing and uh, the long member uh, manufacturing of Daimler. Uh, the uh, 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 turnover last year was approximately about 300 crores. Uh, and, uh, this particular thing uh, augurs very well because for the next 10 years, we are going to be working together as a sole supplier to Daimler. And uh, we could also then use the assets for other uh, uh, consumers uh, in and around Chennai. So I uh, don't really uh, uh, worry too much about the debt uh, in, in the books because uh, this is uh, exceptional circumstances in the world. And uh, in fact, uh, it is more uh, uh, beneficial when you are having higher inventories because the currency movement and all that doesn't affect you uh, to the next year. So I think, uh, yeah, these are certain, uh, certain very challenging uh, times in the world, but higher inventory is something which the customer is already paying you for and he wants you to uh, build inventory. So it doesn't really bother us very much on that. And the moment uh, these uh, things ease up, the uh, semiconductor and the other issues, I think uh, uh, you will find that our inventory will come down back to normal. So not really very really worried about it. 
Well, Tata Consumer closed up close to 100 percent after reports suggested that the Tata Group has made an offer to acquire a stake in Bisleri. Mangla Malu joins us to fill us in with more. Well, Manglam, what are the reports suggesting? And I think you've got a clarification from the Tata Group as well. Well, these are newspaper reports, and if uh, it does materialize, it will perhaps be the deal of the year in the consumer space. Uh, Tatas are eyeing some stake in Bisleri. The first an offer that uh, the report suggests is for a part stake, and thereafter they may look to scale that itself. Uh, it could either be done via the group, the Tata group itself at a group level, or it may go through via Tata consumer level. And if it does happen via Tata consumer, uh, which a lot of the street is anticipating, it would be a big positive for them. And that's primarily because packaged drinking water is uh, one of the strongest growing markets in the country. 20,000 crore market right now with about 60% unorganized share. So the shift from organized to unorgan uh, from un uh, unorganized to organized is the big trigger out there. And we all know how strong a brand Bisleri is, which is now become a generic for packaged drinking water itself. For uh, the manufacturing uh, as well as the distribution and the strong brand that Bisleri commands, it would be a big deal and a big asset in the Tata Group's fold were they to get it. We've written to the company and the company has replied saying that they do not want to comment on uh, market speculation both from the Tata side as well as the Bisleri side but there hasn't been any denial from there and in the past as well Tata Group hasn't been in, in the consumer space in particular hasn't been averse to any sort of inorganic opportunities we've seen them go ahead and acquire brands like Soulful etc and scale them up so it will be interesting to see the future of uh, what's transpiring right now but for now the rumors and the murmurs are allowed that uh, both uh, the Tatas and Bisleri are in talks. Thanks a lot for that, Manglam, but we have completely run out of time on this edition of Markets Today. Thanks so much for watching.